why do you think we do what we do? Where does this come from in our being to open our hearts and be vulnerable in a way and create our online presence regarding self-realization or whatever you want to call it? Where does this come from, would you say? Mm. I feel like it's our, our love for truth and meaning as a human, right? Like there's, especially nowadays, there's so much misinformation everywhere and we, we want to, we want the truth and we want to be free and freedom is truth. So there's a joy in following that path, at least here there's a deep joy in following that and then being able to express that from the place of being because it's fundamentally what we all are. So that's, yeah, there are so many reasons I could, I could sit here for an hour and speak about why I do what I do. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's for truth and for freedom because there's a lot of confusion and suffering in the world. And we've all experienced that. We all do experience that. Um, and so there's something really fulfilling about um, helping play a part in that. And we, without that, like we were saying earlier, um, you know, we just end up becoming nihilistic in a way or yep. like, well, what's the, what's the point? There's no, there's no meaning, you know, it's the materialist view like, oh yeah, we're just in a material world and you know, nothing that, you know, nothing matters and it's just lights out. And that's mm -hmm. when, um, you know, um, we can become very, um, yeah, like even, you know, complacent or hedonistic and it's just like, well, what's the point? But, mm -hmm. you know, when we, when we get in touch with this source consciousness and what we really are, you know, this, this infinite consciousness and we, we have these realizations, we, we realize like there's so much more than just this 3d space time matrix. And so I think we're here to, here to express what that is and do our best in that, even though the words um, don't really point to what it is, right? Well, what do, what do you feel? I say they point, they definitely point, but it never is what it is. We speak, it's everything that we speak is a symbol for what we're trying to convey, right? and also play on words, we say, what's the point? We have found the point. <laughs> it's a little play on words there. We have found the point of life, I feel. And there is something that is in me that just wants to be expressed for some reason. And I don't think there is any higher goal I don't feel as though there is anything more worthwhile in being here than um, putting this out to the world. Because like you said, it's all about freedom. And what higher goal could there be than freeing the minds of others? Or at least, at least helping free the minds. There's nothing truly that we can do to free others minds we can just point the way but that's still a noble goal right if we're even just a testament to this sense of freedom if we're just like an example to others that's still what higher purpose could there be right so i don't feel there's anything really left to do i mean yeah we still gotta yeah. do the laundry we still gotta put food on the table we still gotta live but I think the difference between that is that this wavelength and, like you said, the nihilistic wavelength of the material world is we see that there is a, a higher pursuit, there's a higher purpose than that. So it doesn't negate the world. It transcends all the worldly stuff, all the comings and going of the world. And we try to express that. We try to speak on that, right? 
would you say that's yeah. accurate? Like we we try to at least provide a little glimpse into what that is because for me personally speaking, it's helped me so much. You know, you already said it. It, it helps um, see through our suffering in a way, so we don't suffer anymore. Would you say that is that is why you do it? Is that the ultimate overarching goal? Is to um, negate suffering from this point of view yeah absolutely um it's like the more we free help free others the more we're freeing ourselves right and we all have a a mission here right yeah in that mission is maybe to i'm not sure i can't speak for others but i i deeply believe it's to bring forth that divinity and consciousness through whatever we do and you know here it's that's always been the case even since i was a lot younger like 14 15 i was just always asking you know what what is this and you know trying to like meditate in my room and it's just like once that started i couldn't really um Mm -hmm. i couldn't really like leave that and it took me years later to realize you know, even in my early twenties, like, oh, I've been, you know, following this path. We all have like been following this path of truth for a long time, but we, we all do like, it doesn't matter if you're a spiritual person or, you know, what, um, if you're religious or what, what religion you, you subscribe to, like, we're all on a, a conscious path. We all are consciousness. So no matter what, we're going through and and what challenges we're facing we all come from the same source we're all on an inner transformation that goes forever that's eternal and yeah. you know it appears like in this in form it's like yeah we we have our linear life that has a start and an end but the the process is eternal so yeah, yeah it's um yeah it's exciting Yeah, man. I think we started off with why do we do it? And you just explained what exactly it is that we're getting at. We're trying to get at is that we are eternal beings. The miracle in finding out what we really are or aren't, depending on how you look at it, but the miracle in finding out that maybe there's more than meets the eye. (laughs) You know, the essence of essentially seeing beyond the maniacal compulsions of the ego, right? And all the suffering that brings and being able to feel the true freedom of our actual unfathomable being. That is in you, it's in me, it's in the listener, it's all of us. It's it's a secret. It's our secret immortality. And we're trying to spread the word a little bit, right? We're trying to <laughs> let everybody in on the secret. So it's really not a secret anymore. It's the open secret because yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's always here. Uh-huh. So yeah, that's, yeah. And that is, it's an aha moment. Like when, mm. uh, like when I had that i've had many of those aha moments as everyone so many people have but it's that aha moment that someone just needs to 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 get of like oh there's this there's this thing there's this presence that's this witness that never leaves this right it's been here through all these changes in form even if i change my style of you know clothing or my friends or my job or country or my name or you know we change so much in form but there's this there's this eternal light this eternal being that never goes anywhere and it's it's transparent it doesn't have any bounds it's like we can see it but we can't see it at the same time Mm -hmm. and so it's like this this window of presence the same window now that is there for you is the same window that's here for me but we are just we're unique expressions of that in form 
right? Yeah. So it's the same, it's the same one. It's the same one consciousness, which is playing all of us. Yep. And uh, there's mm-hmm. something deeply freeing and peaceful in actually realizing that, um, yeah, but it's, it's tricky because then you have to come to accept everyone. Right. Mm. And yeah, that's the path. I think that's the work is to be able to see the one in every one. There's another play on yeah. words. <laughs> yeah. That's the work I think we do in refinement of how we express ourselves is how can we love everyone? Essentially, how can we see everyone and everything as yourself? You know, I feel as though in a very simplistic form, it's a two-step process. You get the aha moment, see it, you peek behind the curtain a little bit, and then you work with that realization in order to integrate it into your being. And that is the spiritual journey, I feel. That is the adventure that we spoke about before. You know, that is the hero's journey is to be able to become the sage and become like all of the sages of the past were. And that's it. It's, it's, that, it's all the same truth. Like the people of the past, right? They, they're all saying the same thing. All religions, all religious figures in their pure sense, religious systems in their pure sense are saying the same thing. See the one in everyone. Surrender your ego to the one, yeah. right? And um, it comes in different flavors, diff- different shapes and sizes. Buddha had his own way. Jesus has his own way. We all have our own way of doing it. And I think that's the beautiful thing too, is it's the same yeah. essence, right? It's the same like realization, yet how that realization comes into form is different for all billions and billions and billions of us, right? If I were to become my own Buddha and you were to become your own Buddha, we're seeing the same thing, but it's going to look different. And I don't know. That's what's cool, I think, about this whole thing is there's similarities in what we're seeing, but yet also stark differences in how it comes about and how we embody this thing, Mm. you know? Yeah, totally. And you, you know, you are, I am, and whoever's listening is, are, are the Buddha, you know, yeah. are Jesus on a, on a deeper level, like of the same, the same consciousness, not in form, not in their, their expression, but mm. on the, the deeper level, we all are the same being, but how that appears in form and linearity obviously appears differently but the one and the one consciousness that we're speaking about transcends this world of form it's the great beyond and it's Mm. it's always there this is just this you know 3d plane this um you know this dimension is just a tiny little slither and an expression of that infinite reality um and you know it's been especially here i feel like from from a young age it's been a a big journey of i uh even when i was younger like i always would accept everyone and i'd always let everyone in um and so i ended up like i've had really interesting and great friends but people from all walks of life and people who would you would not you know, stereotype as spiritual at all, completely on the opposite side of the spectrum. And um, if anything, that has taught me so much through just being open to all walks of life. And like an example is, you know, I've had, I've worked with people in the jail system. I've worked with people in prison and, you know, people who are in prison for, you know, disturbing things that, you know, are not what, you know, as, as a human is, is acceptable, but that was the biggest spiritual challenge was actually being able to see like the being, see the being of them. And like that they are, they, they are like a being there's, there's a light of consciousness there. Um, but that light of consciousness has expressed itself in a certain way. And, why does, if we're all the one consciousness, if we're all the one being, then why does it allow people to end up in these 
situations and these life situations. Yeah. And, um, you know, I think that's where you, you really get in touch with the suffering because that comes from like people end up in rock bottom positions because of unconsciousness. Right. And from, yeah. from being disconnected from our source and not, not being conscious, being disconnected from our divinity. So that's where we, we truly get free is when we see the, the suffering that's in everyone and that there's that being the one being that's, that's wanting to, you know, wake up to itself through everyone. Yeah, so, man. Yeah. yeah, it's a good point. I feel as though that comes along with being able to see the one and having this realization is seeing the suffering that comes along in the way. Um, that's part of it. That's why we embody love. That's where the compassion comes from. I think um, Earth is sort of like a school. This realm is sort of like a school for us to learn compassion. And the only way for us to learn love and learn compassion is through suffering. You know, it's like we have to learn how to be, hmm, how to be the light in the darkness, right? That's what it seems like to me, at least. It's like, what is this whole thing about? What is this embodiment, the work about? It's about loving everyone, even the people that don't know who they are. That's the tough part. Even the most unconscious individuals. Can you love them? That's the test. Yeah. It's a big test. Yeah. Yeah. Because we we've all had people who have who have, you know, done done us wrong in the past, or we've we've all had through life's journey and lessons, we've all had uh conflicts. And I think that's all part of the the learning and, and growing, right? Is if we don't you know, if we don't if we don't forgive, it's like it is a teaching of Jesus. Like if we yeah. don't forgive others, then you know we're not. How how can we be free? We're not forgiving. I can't remember yeah. exactly. We don't know exactly the words that we use, but you know how can we actually be free if we can't forgive others? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think that's what we're learning to do. I think that's mm. the the purpose of this human incarnation, man. If there is some kind of overarching purpose for all of us, it's to learn how to love. It might take lifetimes, as they yeah. say. <laughs> um, but I think that's what we're moving toward, is learning all of us how to love each other and live cohesively with each other. Yeah. yeah. And um, got a little bit of work to do, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. We, we're we all in there. Yeah, we all do. Yeah. Exactly. We're getting there. Yeah. But thankfully, we have examples like Jesus that have come before us in the past that have made it per se to become instruments of this love of the divine mm -hmm. to show us that this is real. You know, is this some kind of hippie fairy tale? Is this really the way? Because it seems like so contrary to the popular paradigm, everything in our world is under the illusion of competition, me against you, this is my stuff, you stay away. You know, totally not aligned with love. So one may think that body, and I understand, one may think that trying to become a loving being is only going to be destructive to your being, right? It's like, why would I, why would I want to do that? It doesn't seem like it's conducive to survival, right? Mm. But... It's, I can see that, but it's actually not love in the way that I think the Disney movies portray. <laughs> it's not trying to change anything or anyone. There's no resistance. Well, I'll speak on anyone. Don't try to change somebody. Truly loving somebody, I feel like is being truly present. It depends on the circumstance and the situation. But in a general sense, it's like you're just with the person and you're not trying to make them feel any kind of way, make them feel different. You're just you're just with the person. You're just letting them be them for who they are, even though it might not seem like the best version of themselves or whatever your mind wants to invent about the person. 
I think it's as simple as just let them be who they want to be. <laughs> and yeah. that's it. It's that simple. And the devil's advocate may argue, well, what if they want to be a murderer? <laughs> you let them be a yeah. murderer? Well, that's that's what you that's what we all that's what is difficult is that's what you come to and think like there's people like that out yeah. there and and worse there's yeah you know serial killers and and pedophiles and rapists yeah. and you know we don't want to go there but there's people like that out there and are they the one as well yeah you know they so how are. can you how can you accept them <laughs> and you know that's yeah that's tough well i think if one is on this wavelength right you just don't come across those people it's just not in the vibe like i think like attracts like and we may say oh yeah. they're out there in the world but i don't i've never come across a murderer <laughs> i don't yeah. think so at least <laughs> uh knock on wood. yeah knock on wood right i think it's just like if you're in that energy you're not going to attract that kind of energy right like you're you're not going to attract that darkness. And if you do, maybe it's for your your betterment somehow, some way. Point is, though, is um, they are part of the one. But I don't think if you're like, I don't know, if you're pure enough, man, I think there's just something that won't attract that amount of distortion into your life. It's hard to explain. Yeah. You know, it's not in our karma, you could say, to to have to deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah. Unless you want to. like it, 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 it won't attract it, but, you know, the more you go down a path of truth, you really think, like, people that end up in these positions, like, why? Like, why does that happen? And it's through unconsciousness and, yeah. you know, disconnection from our, you know, our eternity and our love, right? And that goes with anything you know, uh, uh, maybe not all the time, but a lot of situations that people can end up in that are very, you know, negative. And uh, now I've been there, you know, and that's part of what has led me to awaken is through lots of the, the learning and love for this and, and, you know, the beauty in life, but also through, you know, making mistakes growing up and, you know, through suffering and like, that's, it's a, it's an eternal ongoing process so pretty much like the the suffering will just keeps happening while there's unconsciousness right and eventually like it has to it has to break it has to break out of that the 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 illusion of of a separate me and and being so lost in in a in a story of of who you are to realize that you're already free now and you know your your freedom is now so in the story and in linearity it will appear like all you know we, we can create all these stories of you know you know why we're a good person or you know why why like, they're a bad why, person. why we're not why we're, why we're not a good person or yeah. you know why why they aren't and mm -hmm. It's all part of the linear story, but as soon as we, through suffering, realize that that is something that we create, you know, we step out and then we see and we feel and embody that, you know, the light of, of consciousness is, is always here and it's what we are and it's what we return to. And, um, yeah, it's an ongoing process here, man. Like I'm, I'm not there all the time. I, you know, have moments where I get, uh, lost in the story and, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really good at, I can pull myself out of it really quickly now. So, mm. yeah. Yeah. I'm on the same wavelength as well, man. I get lost in the darkness, lost in the sauce. I say it sucks me in, but also like you said, it's easy to reacquaint yourself with this wavelength in this essence. I find it's just through simple meditation, being in a sense of solitude, disconnecting from the noise of the world, coming back in and just breathing, really. Just simply breathing, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 minutes, maybe. And that's all it takes to re uh, realign, you could say, 
to this essence. And yes, I do think it eventually, the path of the sage, eventually you get to that point always, all the time. And the labels, the stories don't matter. If a murderer does enter your life, you see him or her as God in drag, just as you would see the Buddha as God in drag. Well, you see the Buddha in everything. You see the Buddha despite the appearances. That is definitely the hard part. But I, I do think that is what we're refining ourselves to be able to see, man. You know, like case in point, Jesus, he saw the people that were killing him as himself, essentially, and he said, forgive them, for they don't know, mm. right? Like he is the embodiment of love is it's it's just complete forgiveness on whatever um, whatever appearance whatever narrative or story is put upon the moment it's complete and utter forgiveness and uh yeah it's tough it's definitely tough man yeah it is it is really tough and that's like that's a you know that story and and what happened there is like like such a a symbol for for suffering and human suffering right and yeah. i know like i said it earlier we've we've all had that we've all had things that have caused us to suffer and that's why we start wanting to wake up right and you know i uh i don't usually share like uh stories of my journey much but like i you know i struggled as we all do i struggled a lot when i was younger with mental health and you know ang anxiety and depression and what led to my awakening was that was was the suffering and not knowing who i was who i was and basic and and life events like you know getting fired from a job having a breakup and you know i i got in a fight at one stage when i was younger with i stood up to a bully mm -hmm. there was a bully and um yeah we got in a fight and I got in a lot of trouble and it caused a lot of suffering in me because I knew like that, you know, I, I do believe you should always stand up to yourself, but, um, you know, it's like violence isn't the, isn't the answer, but I could see, you know, um, eventually like through this journey, I could see like, you know, for, for a bully or, or, or that person to be treating people the way they were, like they must be in a lot of pain. So, um, you know, usually we, we transform the most through our pain and, and what we're holding on to, And eventually like we have to release that. So, um, yeah, that's the reason I'm here and doing what I'm doing is through life and lessons and, mm -hmm. you know, ending up in the mud and picking myself up and, um, that as well as being obsessed with, uh, you know, the path of truth and, um, trying to work this whole thing out. So <laughs> I feel like if I, if I, and maybe some other beings are like that, you know, maybe whoever's watching or, or you are like that, you know, if I was just like from a young age, like, Oh, you know, you know, nothing bad, nothing bad is ever going to happen to me. And it's all just like, it's all just light and, you know, I'll just meditate all the time. Then I don't think I'd actually, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. So yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. That's what the sages say is that suffering is what brings us to this realization. Ultimately, I think you asked earlier, like, why, why is it all of this? Why do we even have to go through it in the first place? I don't remember how you phrased it, but it was something along those lines. Like, why is there so much suffering? That's really it. The suffering, you could look at it in one way as like, oh, it sucks. But, from a sort of ascended point of view, you could actually see that the suffering is actually in our best favor. It's working to wake us up. <laughs> it may seem a yeah. little harsh, but... It's completely it's, paradoxical, isn't it? Yeah, because on one hand, it's like, yeah. oh my God, it's so thick, it's so painful. But on the other hand, it's actually grace. It's actually helping us become more aligned with who we actually are so that we don't suffer anymore essentially so in yeah. one way it is good but i think we will get to a point collectively as a whole as a consciousness a collective consciousness where we don't suffer anymore right that may seem idealistic 
like crazy idealistic. Hmm. But I feel that pull. I think there's that's the pull. Because Yeah. And what else what else is going on here, man? yeah. And and how do you feel when people say like um oh you know um consciousness for consciousness to grow like it needs to suffer, right? Um you know what what does that mean there? Because I know a lot of people might feel like when they're suffering, people question like or ask, you know, why why is God making me or why is the universe making me suffer? Like you know, why, why are you doing this to me? Um, but you know, if we realize like that we are, we're part and parcel of the one of the universe of God, and we are it as well, you know, then it gets interesting because we realize that we are, you know, we're the creator, we're creating, we, we are part of the creator and we're the creator, however you want to, you know, um, vocalize it or or see it so then it's like oh wow i am this creative power like we all have this creative intelligence and power within us and so i think that's how we can then alchemize Yeah. suffering right Yeah. Mm um hmm. we can really like start to do magic because we see that oh you know this doesn't just just through waking up to what we are we see that we have we can create so much so then it's like do i have to suffer as much you know Mm. can i be free now knowing that right now in this moment i always have been free and the only thing that seemed to take me from that freedom was believing in a story that pulled me from my eternal love you know my 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 creative power which is infinite consciousness Mm. Mhm. Mm Amen. so yeah What, what, yeah. How do you feel when people say, oh, well, consciousness needs to suffer to grow? It's like, do we need to suffer? Well, in the in the absolute sense of that statement, no, consciousness, pure consciousness doesn't need to suffer. But The problem, if you want to call it a problem, I think it's just part of the show, part of the play, part of the journey, is that we don't realize that we are this full consciousness that actually doesn't suffer. So from the person that would say that is not coming from this point of pure awareness. Like technically, pure awareness doesn't suffer. We need to suffer. in order to realize that there is no one suffering. <laughs> Again, it's a sort of ironic, it's a joke in there. Um, so it's yes and no. It depends on par it depends what level I guess you're looking at it from, right? Pure consciousness in its essence. No. But what we think we are as consciousness, yes, it does need to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. For, for, for the one infinite consciousness to even realize the epicness and the magnitude of what it is Exactly. it has to it has to separate itself and suffer through that right because otherwise if it was just it which we can't really we can't really express that we can try but if we, if we were just it and there was no sense of separation then we couldn't actually know the fullness of what we are or the the infiniteness of what we already are right and so through inseparating then we forget as the one we forget who and what we are and we have to suffer through that process to come back to what we always were yeah Mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> that's it <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty powerful yeah man yeah wow you should take take that as a take that as a, a clip yeah i might clip have to <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'll clip that one <laughs> wow yeah Yeah, and then I feel as though once you realize it, touching upon your point of transmutation, once one does realize it, the suffering doesn't end, right? But we begin to play the game a little bit differently. Like the rules change, you could say, to how we deal with the suffering. It's a little bit lighter, you could say.
right? It's a little bit, it's not as heavy. It's not as, not as uh, brooding upon what we think we are. Um, it just doesn't, it just doesn't hold as much weight as it used to. So then from there, we can start to, we can start to play the game differently with a little more freedom where the suffering isn't holding us back from creating truly ultimately out of suffering, but creating more so like creating a journey, creating an adventure here amidst the suffering. That's the thing is like learning to learning how to actually maybe enjoy it, it may sound masochistic, but not enjoy it in a way that's like painful, but it's like you start to dance with all that comes about in one's life right it's like you start to hmm it's like ultimate neutrality amidst the highs and the lows and then in that midst of ultimate neutrality the creative force that comes about is magical man i don't know what else to say it's like um you start to realize the true majesty of just being alive despite what is going on in the highs and the lows in the pleasures and the pains in the suffering and in the peace right the true majesty of one's life here as a suffering being right as a separate entity that is also part of the one it's like everything changes in how we see it but nothing changes in how it actually is does that make sense <laughs> yeah like, i completely completely understand that yeah and that's like there's a there's a peace in those highs and lows right there's a peace that never leaves and that's where we truly get free and we truly embrace all the highs and lows because we know behind that or amongst that where all the highs and lows appear in uh, an eternal peace, right? Yeah. So once I, I, you said like, um, what, what, where did you, you said neutrality, some, something neutrality? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like an yeah. ultimate neutrality but to ultimate the neutrality. Moment. Yeah. So what, if, when we can find that neutrality, it's not like we're becoming a robot. We're actually getting in touch with our, you know, pure life force and essence, which is, it's just so energetic yeah. and like, once we actually get in touch with that, you know, it's such a powerful feeling. It overrides all the highs and lows and it's just energy, right? So that energy, creative then, energy, creative energy that then really is like the bedrock of our experience yeah. here. So then it's not as bad and as heavy, the lows, and we don't get so lost in the highs that they, you know, we have a big crash from them. We can actually like experience, you know, this, this game in its fullest and in a more pure way and a more connected way to reality, because we are in that reality. We were closer to it. We've taken off, you know, we've taken off the, the tinted glasses. Yeah. Or, at, or at least, at least a few pairs of them, depending on how many <laughs> we have stacked on each other. Yeah. And you said it it's a game it becomes very game like and yeah it's very interesting right because human beings seem to be and maybe i'm wrong but human beings from what i know now the only species form of consciousness that plays games right it's very interesting we have this phenomena of where we just we do things just to have fun right mm. you could say some games are for money or trophies whatever it is but a lot of us just play games because we enjoy the process right we like just to get lost in the game so that's exactly the um the feeling that i get from what we're talking about now it becomes like a video game in the essence of i'm i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying the process right yeah. i'm enjoying i'm losing myself right? Where I lose myself. That's what we do in video games, right? What makes a really good video game? When you get really immersed and you forget you're at the keyboard or you have the controller, you're like, you're in Skyrim, <laughs> right? You're, you're on that adventure. That's how life starts to feel, man. 
Mm. You like you lose yourself in the highs and the lows. You like you you lose your sense of control, which I think we spoke about a little bit before. You you lose your sense of trying to control it. And then it becomes beautiful. It's it's weird because you, you it's, it seems paradoxical, right? You, you lose your sense of trying to control it. But yet, what comes into fruition is a sense of creativity. So that may seem like a contradiction. But it's like creating not against the grain. It's like creating alongside the creation. When before we're trying to go against the stream, I feel like when you're creating from the ego, you're just creating entropy. When if you are conscious, you're creating with God. You're creating Mm -hmm. with the Tao, the logos, you could say. And you do give up control, but yet there's so much freedom in that essence of aligning with the logos, right? So again, it's hard to explain. It's sort of contradictory because there's a sort of essence of surrender, yet I feel so free being an instrument to this creation, right? We are creators of the creation. We're creating alongside the creation. It's very freeing to be aligned with that. You know what I mean though? It's like we we surrender, but at the same time, it's also freeing. Completely, yeah. Completely. Because we realize we we you know, nature we can't control and whatever's creating this game, this yeah. this consciousness or outside of this space-time world, whatever's creating this um, you know, we can't, as soon as we let go of control and realize that this is, this game is just being run how it wants, but we also, the best thing we can do is be aware, right? And that's our free will in a sense. It's like, I don't believe like we have absolute free will, but the the free will is just by being conscious and realizing you're in a relationship with, whatever that is, whatever that force is that's creating this game. And for this to appear, you know, like it has to, if, if we saw what it actually was, right. You know, out, it, it would be very for our, our limited human perspective, it would be very confusing. Um, it's like, I was thinking before of like, when you said games of, um, zombies, and like Call of Duty zombies, you know, like who would, you know, people love playing that and getting lost in that, but who would, you know, who would want to fight zombies here? No one (laughs) would, but then why do we, you know, why do we uh, experience challenges and, you know, things we don't like in life? And is that part of the ultimate game is being able to get lost in that and then realize that, oh, you know, this is, this is just a a projection of an infinite consciousness outside of space time mm. and um yeah i think once we can get in touch and that's what we do through meditation and psychedelics really help people with that is like getting in touch with that you know consciousness outside of space time we see from all of that from meditating if you or or anyone watching has had psychedelic experiences you know you do see that there is so much more to this there's so much more affecting this in terms of you know other beings and and other technologies and other you know endless probably endless dimensions outside of this one um you know, just in space and time. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's endless. It's endless, man. The only constant is change. And yeah. we in our humanly form have the audacity to think that we can change this enormous grand change, right? We try mm-hmm. to pave our own way. That's the archetype of Lucifer. He tried to create his own world, his own God, right? Mm-hmm. That's what we try to do. Yeah. We all try to become our own god you know we go against the grain the Tao, you could say the force (sighs) and what leads to freedom is ultimate surrender um is 
figuring out that we don't have that much control here. <laughs> we can yeah. try. We have free will to be able to try, right? I think yeah. that's a that's a great um a blessing is that we have free will. We have eternity to be able to enact our free will for as long as we want. But if we do, part of it, the catch is that we're going to suffer for as long as we try to pay our own way and we're going to suffer. That's the path. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Um can I ask you about psychedelics though? I don't know if we ever talked about it. And no, we we didn't last time. Yeah. I'm surprised. Um so yeah. what have they done for you and what do you see as their purpose altogether for us you touched upon it already a little bit but why are psychedelics so important to being able to um feel this in one's life or just mm. why are they so important for you yeah well i i don't i don't feel like they're everyone's calling obviously but um you know for for me at least even from a young age, being interested in truth and consciousness, I did, I felt a strong pull towards, um, you know, towards experiencing these things and like, what you know, what can these teach us? You know, when we, when we do, and there's so much backed by science now, um, when we do the research, it shows that, you know, these, these, um, sacred substances can can lower the default mode network mm -hmm. and um you know really help people pull off pull off filters and see more of reality more of what's there and the thing is a lot of it especially like nndmt and 5meo dmt are endogenous they're already in us they're in every person they're in every plant they're in at you know every every uh, every species of, um, of, 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 of animals and, and other species. So, you know, we, we produce this. And if you go, like I did a, a dark room retreat, maybe four months ago, I did six days in there. And, um, you know, by day five, you start producing endogenously an NDMT and 5-MeO DMT. And they're just words for it, of course, but you start the look because, you know, you're, I, I can't remember the exact science behind it, but your, you know, your melatonin is you've, you've blocked that. So then, you know, you start, um, you start entering these spaces. So it's, it's already within us. So I think where, what psychedelics can show us is they show us the potential states of consciousness that's there and what's already inside of us and then from there on we can access these without it you know if, if we like lifelong meditators if we can really disconnect from the headset if we can really um let go of our stories and thoughts if we can really um allow that to which can be frightening for some if we can really allow that to fall away that's what death is right we can actually yeah. step outside of the headset and get a peek of that reality it's like pulling up the curtain and you get yeah. a peek of what's beyond this and um yeah uh i think yeah and they've they've shown me a lot and i know they're not the answer but i i i think these can really help people so yeah mm. Yeah, so you're saying what they allow is a very efficient way to be able to see behind the curtain, right? To see Oz. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah. like the red pill in a way. Yeah, I see that as well. It's some. Um, well, what about what about with you? They have functioned for me as a very surefire way to be able to. Um, pretty much what I said to be able to pierce the veil no pun intended on mushrooms pierce the veil and see through the delusions of the ego very fast very quickly very efficiently like it gets rid of all the BS right then and there you can't hide from it the chemical induction of specifically psilocybin for me has been probably the the strongest thing 
that has led to um, ego death. And I think that's really the name of the game. If one wants to get on this wavelength, you have to relinquish the ego. You have to extinguish the ego in one way or the other. You don't have to use psychedelics, but psychedelics, they help one get the glimpse. And sometimes all you need is that one glimpse to um, partake on the path, to start along the path. Because once you get the glimpse, once you take the red pill, you don't go back into the matrix. So I think in a way, (laughs) yeah, right. So psychedelics are like, not for everyone, for sure, but for special individuals, they are what is needed to be able to to get the glimpse. And then from there, I don't think you need them anymore. Personally, um, I haven't done them in years, but I revere the times that I had the sessions, high dose sessions that allowed me to see through my, my mind essentially see through the BS and feel what's real in the moment and go with that. And I haven't done them in a few years. I don't feel the need because it's like, once you know, you know, (laughs) once you know, you know, (laughs) exactly. And they're not, you know, there's no, there's no one thing is the answer. Right. But they are a very good way of, of getting in there and, and getting under the ego and showing you what's there. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. Uh, same here, you know, I've always been like that. I've always been, I've always had that curiosity, even from a young age of just like, you know, I, I, I've all, I always felt like that. Like I need to, explore this otherwise what's the point you know especially with the work that i do it's like i feel a little bit like i'm you know selling myself short if i if i didn't try these things but once you do it shows you that yeah you are the answer you have yeah. this inside of you yeah and um yeah. you know we shouldn't become dependent on these things as well like a lot of people mm-hmm. can like and i I find that in the spiritual world a little bit as well. Like, you know, it's, it's about, it's about having an open perspective to all of it, right? Like some people can get hooked on, on healing and, and trying to fix themselves. And it becomes a endless healing journey of, I'm not, I'm not healed yet. I'm not fixed yet. I'm not complete yet. Yeah. And, you know, that it, they had, it has, a purpose. It has a purpose, of course, like healing and trauma work. But I feel like once we can see through that, then just let it go. It's just about letting it go and seeing that you're already free now and you're okay. And, but what the mind and ego can do is it can go in circles of I need. And, um, that can happen in the psychedelic community as well Is some people like they, they keep doing psychedelics to mm-hmm. try and, to try and, um, find something, but eventually you'll just get to the point where it's, it's shown you so much that it's like, okay, like, yeah, need to, yeah, yeah let go of this a bit. But, Gonna hang up the phone. Yeah. As Alan I also, say. I also feel like on, a, on the other hand, like a lot of people I've met in say meditation circles or from groups I've been a part of, it's probably with a lot a fear of going there say if they're they're, if you're truly interested in exploring consciousness Mm. then why would you not do this i feel like it just be it would just be a no-brainer which was the case with me but it it could be a lot of underlying fear even for spiritual seekers of revealing what's there and really um going really going in and just giving it a go and so unless you actually have done these things and really gone in there, then how can you have any sort of say over if it's good or bad or, or, um, you know, what it should be. Um, one of the most, which helped me on the path so much, one of the most powerful things I did is I did ayahuasca two years ago. And, um, that was, I mean, incredible. It was incredible because it showed me before that for years, since I was younger, of course, I had, I, I'd done all this work, right. And I'd been on this path for so long. And so I would prepared for this for so long and I just knew I was ready. But in doing that, in being able to 
go there and see what's there, I was then able to, it, I could then see that I could then find a connection within myself after and mm. others and the, the planet and a really, a really grounded connection that was like, wow, you know, I'm super grateful mm. that I, um, that I got to experience that. Um, but if, if every part of someone's being is saying like, no, to not do or try these things, then yeah, you should listen to that. Mm. Yeah. It's hard to say what to listen to and what not to listen to. It's hard to generalize. I feel as though if you're really a, a serious seeker of truth and you haven't experienced psychedelic experience, I say in mushrooms, high dose mushroom sessions, as in up to four to five grams, which is pretty serious. If you haven't experienced that, you're kind of missing out. You don't need to, but Another thing, what it is for me is just a giant affirmation that what all the stuff we're talking about now is real because the mind will convince you that it's not real. This is just BS. These guys are just hippie talk, saying platitudes and cliches over and over again. Is love really the truth? Well, when you're on five grams of mushrooms, all doubt goes out the window. <laughs> it's like it's because the, con the conceptual mind can't hold on to mm -hmm. all its beliefs and, and judgments right in yeah. those in those spaces so mm -hmm. you either you don't have a choice but to surrender and that you will like the ego will die like you will feel and it can feel like that with some of these that's why they're so powerful and yeah. you know you should really feel into if it's the right thing for you if someone's thinking about it you know that you you will feel like you're dying um, but when you surrender to that, it's beautiful because that's when yeah. you transcend this form and the ego, you do die. The ego dies and you go to the beyond, you know, you, you get outside of the headset and you see what's there. And, um, yeah, there's lots of, it's not just woo woo talk. It's like, this is all spoken about in science and quantum physics. Now there's a lot of people and a lot of professionals and, and smart people out there that have spoken about this and try it themselves and say they're mm. even, you know, they're even proving this in physics now that, you know, we can get outside of the headset and, you know, there's other structures that we can't perceive there. And, you know, when you do these, if you do try these things, yeah, people can meet other beings and 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 stuff like that and yeah there's a lot of there's a lot out there that we we believe we're, we're so naive a so lot of naive. the time and you know we all are but we 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 think we think we know it all and especially um wow like the materialist view of you know oh, this is just a i don't know if we said this earlier on or if this was before we started but you know this is just the material world and you know ma the material world gives rise to consciousness and oh yeah you know so nothing matters and it's, it's just random. i find it a bit silly it's it just is. it's just silly it's 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 a old way of seeing things and you know to really to really grow as a culture we need to we need to you know get in touch with this and be able to be brave and and take the steps um towards our infinity yeah amen amen yeah it is an archaic way of seeing things the material point of view and the thing is i can speak on that because i used to think like that I used to be atheist pragmatic rationalist all about science and math and all of this hippie talk is just nonsense then i got into psychedelics <laughs> and i was like wait a second hold on it's um yeah man it's just like it's just proof it's like it's it's so hard to explain right now and put into words, but when you're in the midst, when you're two hours in on an ayahuasca session, right, or a psilocybin session, where you just took a hit of some DMT and you're five minutes in and you're you're not even here anymore, really here, or you're here but you're doesn't seem like you're here. If you're in the midst of the psychedelic experience, fully in it, man, that materialist paradigm is just it's it's not even it's it doesn't compute it's like a whole different 
reality essentially it's um it's hard to explain like i said it's very hard to explain but when you're in it you yeah. feel it you feel it's, the it's like trying to explain now a color that doesn't exist the right? way to put it and, yeah or like a, a flavor that doesn't exist um mm. yeah i like that yeah 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 you see beyond the senses right you see yeah. that there is way way more than meets the eye than meets the nose meets the ear meets the skin there's way mm -hmm. more going on than just the body and yeah it can be like you said before a another attachment right it can be another trap where you're trying to escape using the psychedelic experience for sure or any spiritual practice for sure mm. we try to escape through our um our spiritual pursuits i can see that for sure through through anything really like yeah, we, we try to escape we try to escape the power and openness of this moment through so many things right so mm. many and it's a it's a tricky one to really to, to really look into sometimes because of course like we know we we try and escape this moment and the rawness of this by lots of things like technology or or food or sex or, or drugs and there's there's countless things that we want to try to do to escape but on the other hand like you know some of these things are here for us to enjoy right and you know uh, the mind and ego can also create a lot of stories around um you know uh, why we can't do any of that and yep. especially on the spiritual path you know it's like people and i've been there before um, people can get so caught in like in a, a very harsh way of viewing reality in themselves of you're not allowed to enjoy like you have to be yeah. like a, a monk or, or something <laughs> and so it's something i've not struggled with but i've really thought about and questioned is like you know where's the truth in this of like um saying like oh you know you can't you can't enjoy or crave anything you know you have to just be like a a still <laughs> person or monk in the world and then also being able to like enjoy these human uh pleasures and side of life mm -hmm. which we all like doing so mm -hmm. yeah it's the middle way i like to say the middle don't, way yeah don't be too attached yeah. to being unattached <laughs> you gotta yeah. some, be somewhere between a monk and a hedonist <laughs> right somewhere in the middle find a balance between that i think that yeah. that is what the path leads to is balance and the thing is too is once one is seated firmly in this understanding of pure consciousness you could say of god the thing is i feel is we enjoy the escapes you could say we enjoy the um the pleasures even more so, I feel, I feel the, the things that, you know, the, the pizza tastes a little bit better. The coffee, it tastes so great. It's, you know, the movie's great. You see just the beauty in all of the stuff because it's fleeting, essentially. It's not like we run away from it because it's temporary and, and false. It's an illusion, quote unquote, whatever you want to describe it as. It's actually quite the contrary, it becomes that much more beautiful because it's all temporary in an illusion. It's a beautiful illusion, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a gift, right? Because it's yeah. like, they're, they're here. It's part of the game and mm -hmm. they're here for us to enjoy. And I feel like that's the middle way is seeing the, seeing the consciousness in that. It's not like we always have to be like drinking coffee or eating food and thinking like, Oh, you know, this is consciousness. But if we can just like feel that, even when we eat food or when we have a coffee, you know, or even that's where say human sexuality, that's where we, we can get really disconnected is not seeing the, what that actually is and the connection we can find in that and the consciousness that is in that. Um, then, you know, that's when we find the middle way and we can enjoy life's pleasures, but we're, we're, we know we're always interacting with ourself, right? Yeah, exactly. We're always in a relationship with ourself because everything is consciousness. So therefore, you know, everything you, you do 
is in relationship with yourself. That's it. So, yeah. 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 I think you said it right. And this might be, might be a good note to wrap it up at. I don't know. We'll see. But it all becomes very enjoyable, right? Summon this whole idea, this wavelength, this essence up. Why do we do it? I think that was actually the first, <laughs> that was the first question. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, ultimately, why? It's because it helps me enjoy life a lot more than before I saw things this way. And hopefully along the way, I help others see this way. But really, when it comes down to it, is I save myself to see this way and then enjoy, truly enjoy, enjoy life, enjoy the moment and how I feel as though it was created to be enjoyed. And um, that's what it's all about, man. It's actually being happy yeah. here. If you want to say happy, being happy. Not, right? It's just finding yeah. joy, satcha ananja, um, joy, yeah. consciousness, bliss. And that's what our essence and this moment is right is joy is when we can get in touch with that right it doesn't matter what you you know it doesn't doesn't matter what you do because then you're coming from a place of of open-heartedness and the heart right and and heart consciousness heart intelligence so then whatever you do whether it's like you know you enjoy what's a good example i don't know like fishing or or you know going out and you know looking at planes or something or you know watching movies or whatever it is you know you know even even like combat sports even though a lot might disagree with that it's like if you can find the divinity in that the consciousness in that in knowing that it's all a relationship with yourself yeah and that's where the freedom is you know and then we we lose the stories around why are we are doing things we we drop the stories and we start experiencing reality for what it is yeah and that joy is you right so that joy is you right now and that's that piece that we were saying before that's always here it's always coming back to that witness to that awareness no matter what you're doing is you know am i am i conscious now like am i aware now you know what's you know, and, and once we get into more of a relationship with that, then that's our, that's the bedrock of all of this experience. So, Amen. yeah. Yeah, man. <sighs> yeah, I don't have anything else to say. You want to just yeah, keep it at that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can feel like we could go for, go for hours, but you know, I'm sure you've got things to do and I do as well. Yeah. So, so we can wrap yeah. it up at that. We can, we can keep trying to describe this. We can, keep trying to put labels mm -hmm. on something that can't be labeled for sure that's the ironic joke right is that um we're trying to explain something that can't be explained we're trying to talk about it but yet you can never really get to the to the meat and bones of what we're trying to talk about right we never and i realize that i'll never be able to explain it i've done over 200 podcasts i've said i've said it pretty much every way that i could say it and I realize that and I still, I can't stop talking about it. It just keeps going. Like there's yeah. so much joy I, I coming back to it. There's just joy because, in being able. Be, because you feel that in yourself, you're, you're in touch with this, but yeah. you know, and then you, you know, and you love the power of that. But in order to, when, when you feel that you want to express it, right. I don't feel mm. like there's any other way, or at least here, you know, it's the same. It's, it's the love of, expressing that and um yeah you know they they are just they are just pointers but what it's pointing to is you mm -hmm. is what it's all pointing to is you is mm -hmm. it's yeah always it's all you even though in form we we appear as our unique weird you know messy human selves like you know you always come back to it's you're you're okay at the end of the day you're okay in all yep. of your all of your humanness and all of your confusion and everything that's on top of that and everything that happens is, you know, you're, uh, you're always being supported by mm. an infinite love and something we can't really understand. Well said, no. Yeah.
thank you for coming on here, man. This was uh, Mike. I dropped the mic on that one. <laughs> this was an awesome talk. You're a great guy. Keep doing your thing, man. So are you, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thanks. You're a real one. Um, yeah. Thanks for coming on here. Sharing I am. I am another you. So, yeah. you know, you're, the, you're, you're a beautiful, you're a beautiful expression of the one. I, I, you, I appreciate you. Right back at you. Well, that's it. Peace and love to you, man. Peace you too, love. man. Thanks. Thanks for doing this. All right. See ya.